Oh, hello. We weren't recording. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we have a camera. Okay. Wow, this is so weird. This is so weird. Um, welcome back. Welcome. Are we doing... I'm Stella. Oh, and I'm Poppy. And you're listening to A Well-Written Life, the podcast where we talk about writing, navigating life as an aspiring author, and where the F we've been over the past year. Oops. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what's that like meme where it's like, you know, hey y'all, how y'all doing? <laughs> that one where yeah. it's like you you show back up. You did you clearly did something wrong. You know you did something wrong, but you just like try to pretend that everything's fine. Hey. <laughs> how y'all doing? <laughs> no, I was thinking of the one where it's like um, buy yourself whatever, do whatever, and then like disappear for a while. It's called self care. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, you know that's what I mean? really. This is just a lesson in self care, everyone. Okay, life got a little crazy, and we went on a hiatus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It adds to our mystery actually and our appeal, the allure mm-hmm. of us actually. So, you know, <laughs> as a writer, as a writer, you always want to keep we, your audience guessing, and yes. we're like, you know what? We said plot twist, we're back. <laughs> Thought you'd seen The Last of Us. Surprise, bitch. Oh, look. Cheers. Cheers. We have Rosé for our comeback episode. Yeah. And hopefully we're on video. Yeah, we'll see. I, this is so We're weird. trying something new. We're trying to keep it spicy. Keep things interesting. Um. So, yeah, head on over to our YouTube channel. Which we, we knew what that was. <laughs> um, we'll let you know. We'll link it. Um, but yeah, if you are watching this on video, then don't judge our setup. We don't know what we're doing, and that, I think, should be clear by now. Yeah, if we're humble as well, so. <laughs> if you're new to this show, hi, we don't know what we're doing. Okay, so our first segment of every episode that we're bringing back is what's inspiring you this week, and with a new special twist, in one minute or less. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Rapid fire weekly inspiration. That's top right. Three. Yes. So honestly, what's inspiring me is just this new year energy and you know being back with it, back at it with this podcast, you guys. I know we ghosted you for a while, and like I said, or like we said, we're really sorry about that. But we've been working on so much stuff behind the scenes, and I'm just really excited about everything we have in store for 2023. Yes. Um, so I'm feeling really inspired and motivated right now just for all of the creative things ahead. I think this is going to be our best year ever. And maybe oh this year we will actually stick to this podcast. Oof. I really hope we do. That's the plan. We didn't want to come back until we were ready to stick with it, you know? Because we don't like to disappear. We don't like to be ghosts. That's right. And, you know, there are times over the past year where we could have come back and started doing this again. But, like, we weren't ready to commit to being able to do it consistently so right. and we have other stuff that we want to bring to the table too that hopefully you will learn about soon yeah Ooh. and one of them is hopefully making this a video podcast too yeah but as far as weekly inspiration goes i couldn't agree more that was also my weekly inspiration yeah. just coming back to this podcast also talking to poppy about writing again like i couldn't believe how much i feel like it actually did help just my individual writing like talking to you about this stuff yeah every for week, sure you know so I'm excited to, to keep doing that yeah I feel like you know along with taking a break from I, I mean I'm I feel the same way like talking with you and doing this podcast like kept me committed to my writing kept me like motivated to do that and I feel like you know over this past year I've been pretty bad about keeping up with my writing as well so excited about that if you've been struggling to stay motivated in your writing life maybe it's because you need a little community maybe it's because you've been missing us so maybe you need to like watch a video or listen to a podcast of two like super young cool hip girlies <laughs> talking about writing i don't know if super young is true anymore i feel like i'm getting really old but <laughs> <laughs> writers never age all right That brings us to segment two, drafts, a.k.a. what we're working on this week, a.k.a. what we're talking about this week, and it's very on theme for our comeback episode, which is how to start writing again after a hiatus. Yes, I love this topic because it's so relatable, and I think especially at this time of year, you know, probably a lot of us fell off the wagon during the holidays, even if you 
didn't like just ghost your drafts and your works in progress over the past year. Maybe you, you know, you've taken a couple weeks off because it's been the holidays. Um, and if you're ready to get back to it, you know, sometimes I think it's hard to shake off those cobwebs. So we have some quick tips to help you get back into the groove. Hell yeah. I've got a little preamble here, if you will, typed out and everything on my script. Oh, let's hear it. (laughs) After taking a break from writing, it can feel impossible to get back into it. You may want to hide under a rock and never show your face, aka voice, like us. Again, to your listeners, or I mean to yourself. Okay, that didn't make sense. (laughs) Um, But to quote the 2004 hit film, A Cinderella Story, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Oh, beautiful. Get back into it. Don't let the fear of striking out keep, keep you from, from playing the game. game. Okay, actually, I think that's the quote. What's my quote from? <laughs> <laughs> let me know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Duff would be so disappointed. But yeah, basically, I just wanted to start this by saying you just have to start somewhere. And just because you put down your writing for a little while or your podcast for a little while doesn't mean you can't pick it up again. That's right. Um, yeah, I, I am really excited to talk about this. I hope that it, you know keeps me motivated and gets me back into the swing of things and you know we've been planning this comeback episode for months and we knew that this is the topic that we wanted to do and uh I don't know for me it just so happened that I came across a blog post on Jane Friedman's website actually I saw it in her newsletter um about this in November of 2022 and it was very timely I thought um and it was written by Matthew Duffus So we'll link to that somewhere uh, if we bring the blog back. Um, Oh, my gosh. It'll be there. But um, anyway, so I got a lot of my tips from that article, or at least a few of them. Um, I just wanted to mention Yeah, my my tips are from a hodgepodge of places. I will not be mentioning them, but (laughs) (laughs) we will put them in the description maybe of our episode or the YouTube notes. Or the blog post, yeah. wherever. Well, Listen, tip number will, one, let go of perfection and just, right. you know, figure it, you'll figure it out as you go. Know that mine is a hodgepodge from legit sources and also just, like, personal experience tips. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, but my first tip, number one tip, read a lot. That was mine, too. Oh, my God. Read authors and books that inspire you. Um, and, like, if you start reading a new book that you aren't into or excited to read, you know what? Life is too short. Ditch it and find a better book, one that inspires you, which I think that's a piece of advice that I do not follow. I, like, force myself, like, I feel like I have to finish Mm -hmm. a book that I start reading, but, like, I think that that ends up being counterproductive because I'm stuck on that one same book for way too long, and I don't feel inspired to write. I'm like, what's the point of writing if I'm going to write something this effing boring? (laughs) No tea, no shade. (laughs) (laughs) But... (laughs) But when I do read something that I'm really into, like, it just, it, it is reflected in my writing. Yeah. I have recently embraced the whole, like, ditch, if a book is not inspiring you or not, like, you're not feeling it, ditch it, because life, there are so many books out there, so many amazing books out there, and life is too short to read bad books, so, um, I've really gotten into checking things out from the library, I, I'll, like, especially audiobooks, because I can instantly download them, I can, like, listen for a little bit, and then if I'm not feeling it, I return that baby. I like, I just hit return. Yeah. And then I check out a new one. Um, so definitely, you know, don't be afraid to switch it up. Like you said, embrace your local library people. Yeah. Um, going along with that, my second tip was you can also reread your own work. And I got this tip from writersedit.com. Um, but if you're struggling to find inspiration, you can maybe poke back through some of the, some of your old ideas and unfinished drafts read what you've done so far and see if like maybe that inspires you to pick up where you left off. I think, um, you know, looking at something with fresh eyes, even if you got tired of it before and set it down for a while, you can always come back to it. Maybe now you have a new perspective and you're like, oh, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Um, so, you know, that project that you thought was terrible and got burnt out on six months or a year or three years ago might not be as bad as you remember. So, reading back through it I think can really inspire you to like get excited to pick it back up again I think that's a really good tip that I did not think of but you saying that just now reminded me that I have like a separate word doc like in addition to my like manuscript of my current draft that I'm writing 
that I will have like notes and stuff of little excerpts that I might want to use at some point and like I highlight like my favorite ones and I will go back and read the highlighted ones That's such a good idea. and remind myself that I'm not terrible <laughs> <laughs> there's hope you know yeah. so I think that's a great tip great um my second tip is just to start small try for just like like try to just set a timer for like five minutes or like 10 minutes you know just try for 10 minutes you know because you can do that yeah. and I feel like it feels daunting if like you hear that like I've heard a tip floating around that it's like real writers write for like three hours every day or something impossible Unattainable. and it feels daunting like bef like just getting started and like before you sit down and like open your laptop um to like set out for like several hours of uninterrupted writing time and I don't think that that's very realistic but it's like if you just set a timer just start for like 10 minutes um and dedicate that time to being uninterrupted writing time you can do it you can do just about anything for like five or ten minutes and eventually it'll become 15 minutes 30 minutes an hour um because yeah sometimes the hardest part is just starting agreed that actually goes hand in hand with my um next tip which was also to start small and this is an idea that our boy Matt had in his article on the Jane Friedman blog. Um, what he did was he bought a pack of lined index cards. He numbered 30 of them, 1 through 30. And then he filled the lined side of one index card per day over the course of a month. So he, oh, he had like 30 index cards and he just hand wrote the size of one index card every day for 30 days. And by the end of the month, he had the beginnings of a longer story. Like, it kind of started coming together. And, yeah. I mean, an index card, it's like you can easily read the previous day's index card, pick up where you left off, write another index card's worth. Like, that probably takes five or ten minutes, like you said. Um, and I just thought this was – I just liked this idea. It's, like, another way to approach writing, starting small. And I love the idea because, you know, he wasn't – he didn't go into this thinking, I'm going to write a whole book. Like, I'm going to figure out, like, a book and try to write that. He didn't even know what he was going to write about when he started. He just kind of wrote in first person. He started from his own personal experience, which at the time he was working as an apartment caretaker. And on, like, the second day of work, um, one of his residents had a plumbing emergency that he wow. had to deal with. <laughs> and so he, like, started writing about that. And, like, a story just kind of naturally developed from there. So... I think that can also be like a barrier when you're trying to get back into writing is like a lack of inspiration maybe not having an idea of you know what you want to write about and, be, and I think when you're like oh, I want to write a book but I don't know what it should be it's like that can be I think it's like hard to get started if that's your goal but totally. I think if it's just like oh I'm just going to fill this index card and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be part of anything bigger than what it is like it can just be a couple of sentences like you know, totally. I think that's a really good way to approach it. And maybe at the end of 30 days, you have a story idea come out of it, and maybe not. But either way, you got back to writing. You're writing every day. You're yeah. a writer. That's right. Um, that reminds me of something that I know that I've mentioned before on this podcast, if y'all want to dig through the archive. <laughs> um, but I had a screenwriting professor in college who had us do morning pages. And basically every day for like 30 days, our assignment was to write three pages every day. And... She let us, like, it was, it, it could be anything that we wanted it to be. It didn't even have to be, like, sensical. It was just, like, getting words on the page. And the whole point is that at the end of the 30 days, you have 90 pages written, which is the length of a feature film script. Wow. And that also ties into my next tip, which is just to journal. And, like, I think the morning pages thing, like, a lot of people in our class really liked it and, like, said that they were going to implement it into their daily life and stuff. And it's, like, even if you're just writing to, like, journal... Like, it doesn't have to be a cohesive novel, you know what I mean? If you're just now getting back into it after taking a break for a long time or whatever, you can use the, your journaling time to brainstorm new ideas and just, like, write for the fun of it. And I think that that's a good way to, like, get back into writing. Like, don't put pressure on yourself for this to be, like, your best thing you've ever written or to write, like, a completely cohesive, like, perfectly sensical novel like, you can come back and just write for the hell of it. You know, like, get back to why you love writing and just brainstorm new ideas, let yourself be creative, and write whatever you want and don't judge yourself for it. I love that. That was my next tip was to take the pressure off of yourself. Um, if you want to write novels and you have four 
half-baked novel drafts laying around like I do, and you feel discouraged because you're like, I'm never going to get published, so what's even the point of trying to write another, like, why ha- why write a fifth crappy draft, um, you know, when I have four sitting there that I'm already not doing anything with? Um, you know, has it occurred to you that maybe you don't have to write a novel? Like, you could write a short story or a poem or even just a sentence or an index card. Yeah, Um, write about your day. Yeah, just write for the sake of writing. Um, You could even, like, look up some fun writing prompts on Pinterest. Love Pinterest. Love Pinterest. (laughs) Or something, you know, just write um, and take the pressure off. My next tip is to make a schedule. So try setting, like, a daily word count goal, having a set writing space that you... You know, you have a set time that you're like, okay, I'm going to go sit at my desk and write for maybe just 10 minutes every night at 8 p.m., mm-hmm. you know? Um, oh, and I, I wrote advanced. Define your goals for the writing session. <laughs> oh, advanced. <laughs> because I think that if you, like, it depends how long was your hiatus. Was it a full year that you disappeared off the face of the earth? Um, and all your listeners, I mean, readers, thought you were never going to come back? Uh-huh. Um or do you have like a goal in mind yeah. and you can start breaking it down with like word counts and stuff. And I actually read this tip. I think this is from the book Atomic Habits, which is like a nonfiction book, you know. I don't remember the author's name. By James name. Clear. Yes. Okay, yep. Um, <laughs> I recently read it. I think that's his name. I said that with a lot of confidence. I don't actually. I believe I think it. that's right. <laughs> um, and it's just about like being more productive mm-hmm. and like kind of. Did making- you read it? No, I read, like, a summary of it. Oh, I read like, it. With, like, tips. I read it. It was, was very it good? good. I highly recommend it. Okay. Well, I think that this is from there. Okay. And it's kind of, like, putting it into a sentence. Like, every day after I do blank, oh, yeah. I will write for however many minutes. And you, like, make it really specific to, like, fit into your day. And I started doing this in the mornings. Like, every day after I make coffee, I will sit in my bed and write for 30 minutes. Oh, I love that. And it's really nice. I really enjoy it. And it, I feel like it's become part of my routine. That it, like, it feels natural and right to write with my coffee in the mornings. Yeah. Like, before I do anything else. Yeah. Um, so I think that there's something to that. I love that. I think that's brilliant. I... Like the idea too, I so I did I, I attempted NaNoWriMo this past year um, in November, and uh, I was sick and I didn't finish and there was there was a lot of stuff but we can talk about that another time, um, but one of the things I noticed myself doing when I was writing was like I got so obsessed with the word count that it was like mm-hmm. I was literally like just typing and not even looking at what I was writing I was just looking at the word count box and I'm like. The second I hit the word count that I needed for the day, I was like, okay, done. Yeah, you're, like, not fully engaged. Yeah, I was like, I wasn't, like, fully, like, I wasn't getting into flow. I wasn't, like, really present with, like, the writing. And so I would recommend if you are, like, trying to set a goal for yourself, especially if it's been a while since you've written, I think a timed goal might be better than, like, a word count goal. Or even if the goal is just, I'm going to write every day, even if it's just one sentence, you know? Yeah. I think that that might be, like, the way to go. Um, at least when you're trying to get back into it at the beginning. Yeah. Sometimes I find it helpful to, like, even, like, read part of the book that I'm really into right before my writing time because it's, like, it gets the juices flowing. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) It gets your inspiration flowering. Okay, I like that. Um, (laughs) Anyway, my final tip for getting back into writing after taking a hiatus is to embrace the humble creative writing prompt. Mm. You can just Google these, or I have a few examples for you right here, right now. Whoa! (laughs) I pulled two that stood out for me, um, that stood out for me from an article on Writer's Digest. Mm -hmm. Um, So let me read them to you. One is called, I'm Glad You Called. The person whom you or your character has been trying to talk to for ages finally answers the phone. Who is this person? Why were you or your character trying to track them down for so long? How does the phone conversation progress? Mm, I like that. So I think that's interesting because it's playing out like a conflict. Uh And like, I feel like you could do a lot with character development in this. Totally. The other one that stood out to me was called Thrift Store Finds. I love a good thrift store find. (laughs) (laughs) Take a trip to the thrift store or think about your latest trip. 
Pick one item you find interesting and imagine who its past owner was. How did they use the item? Why did they end up donating donating it to the thrift store? Oh my gosh, I think that is so fun. I love Isn't that, that fun? idea. Yes. Like, who did this crusty old sweater belong to? Yeah, or like this creepy haunted doll. Why does that t-shirt have such a weird quirky saying on it? Uh-huh. Why does it look homemade? Who huh. made it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a well-written life exclusive creative writing problem. Ooh, I love those exclusive content, folks. This is why you should tune in. You may see this come back in other forms later on. It's a little teaser for you. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Remember how we said we like to put some mystery in there? Oh my god, yeah. So, we yeah. keep you guessing over here. Keep you on your toes. Okay, this one says, what's the strangest slash funniest conversation you've overheard in recent memory? Imagine what brought those characters to that place and that conversation in that moment. What is their relationship to one another? What's the conflict they're discussing? How is it significant to one or each of them? Wow. Love. Do some eavesdropping, honestly. Yeah. There's a lot you can find out. There's a lot of realistic dialogue you can steal. An interesting conflict that you can pull inspiration from. It's true. So much of so much of story happens like through In interaction life. with yeah. people, you know? So totally. that makes sense. I love that. Totally. totally. Bring us home, Poppy. Okay, my fifth. I don't remember. I lost track. I don't know what how many we've done. <laughs> my I was gonna say my fifth and final. You said fifth so <laughs> confidently. Listen. Something comes over me when I'm like in front of the microphone, in front of the camera. I have this confidence. You were I'm born like, to be a star. I know who the author of Atomic Habits is. <laughs> I guess I've read that book. <laughs> yes, I know exactly where we are and what we're doing, oh, obviously. Yes. Um, my final tip is just be kind to yourself and don't give up. It's okay to take breaks. And I think everyone who writes or wants to write has probably found that life just gets in the way sometimes. Um, It also gets in the way of podcasting sometimes. So, you know what? It's okay. We forgive you. You forgive us. Uh, Forgive yourself. You forgive us. If you take one thing away from this episode, (laughs) it's that you forgive us. Um, All is forgiven. It's okay. Just, uh, you know, be kind to yourself and move forward. That's excellent because I actually had an s- extra special bonus tip. Okay, you lied to me. <laughs> so uh, your last that one. says you can hate yourself for a little bit, but not forever. Oh. We all procrastinate and we're all lazy sometimes. And we are all also capable of de- developing greater discipline and focus. Like, we're all capable of getting back into it. It's okay. Don't hate yourself. And it happens to everyone. Yeah. Don't hate, appreciate. I once read an article. I was going to try to find this exact quote. So maybe I'll cut this out. But I found this article. You love that just was... throwing quotes out there. That, like, <laughs> I don't know where it's from, if it happened, who said it, but I'm going to tell I you. I'm going to it. I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, I read this interview one time with Jillian Flynn, and she was talking about how, like, if you think you're a procrastinator, like, I'm a bigger one. Was basically, like, really? the whole, her whole answer to one of the questions. And um, maybe I'll find that quote and throw, throw, it, out, throw it out there. Um... <laughs> But I just think it was cool to read from one of my favorite authors that, like, she also procrastinates and stuff. It is encouraging. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the third and final segment of every episode, which is revisions, a.k.a. a takeaway from this week's episode. Poppy? Okay. My takeaway from this week's episode is just to start small. Don't build your writing goals up too big in your mind. I think I do that a lot. I always want to look at the big picture and plan out exactly how I'm going to get from point A to point B, how I'm going to make it amazing. Um, And that can paralyze you. That paralyzes me. So I get in my own way. Don't do that. Um, If you've taken a break from writing, sometimes you just need to ease back into it. Write for fun. Write for the sake of writing. Write for that sense of discovery. And that's when you're going to do your best work anyway. Um, so it's, oh, I wrote, <laughs> it's kind of like rekindling a romance. Ooh. There was a reason, like if you and your partner go on a break, there was a reason for that. There was a reason that that happened or you fell out of touch or whatever it was. And you need to give yourself time to fall in love with writing again. <gasps> That's so precious. Wow. I should have made you go last because that is way <laughs> <laughs> more thought out than mine. Um, I will just echo that for my takeaway and say that it's okay if you took a break for whatever reason, writing will over writing will always be there. You can always pick up the pen again 
you can always dust off the keyboard and get back into it. Um, like Poppy said, it's okay to ease yourself back into it. You don't have to show back up and immediately like pop out a, you know, whole novel. Um, and just remember that you are still a writer, even if you only write one sentence. Yeah, that was beautiful. I don't know what you're talking about. I feel, a, I feel I'm a great inspired. improviser then. Yeah, so. I feel motivated. <laughs> okay, well, I think that does it for this episode. Yeah. Um, we'll be back next month. This is our Ooh. new format. Um, in the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. If you've taken a break from writing, how did you get back into it? Um, maybe you want to write something off of that well-written life exclusive writing prompt that Stella dropped earlier mm -hmm. in the episode. Um, we would love to see what you wrote. So you can share your thoughts with us at wellwrittenlifepod at gmail.com and join the conversation over on Instagram at wellwrittenlife. Um, and as always, we'd love for you to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. It would help us out a lot. If you are watching this on, if this makes it into Ooh. a YouTube video wow. um, and you are watching on YouTube, we would love for you to uh, subscribe. What do they say? They're like, smash that, that like button. Yeah, smash that like button, hit that notification <laughs> bell, subscribe to our channel. Do it. Um, we have a lot of exciting things planned for the year ahead and we cannot wait to share them with you. Um, but, but most importantly, start writing again. Ooh. And then keep writing. And cheers to a well-written life. Cheers! Oh my god, cute. <laughs> <laughs>